thank you very much, Professor Almeida, for your kind introduction, and uh, good morning to everybody. Today, I have the privilege and the pleasure to present on behalf of uh, my co-investigator the results of uh, genome editing uh, targeting BCL11A in patients with uh, either thalassemia or sickle cell disease, and these are my disclosures. Few introductory background remarks uh, just to explain the rationale at the basis of this innovative therapeutic approach. When uh, a child with uh, either thalassemia or sickle cell disease is born, uh, it doesn't initially need a transfusion or develop uh, the symptoms related to the disease. And the reason for this is that the patient benefits from the residual synthesis uh, of uh, hemoglobin F, which is uh, the predominant uh, hemoglobin during the fetal life. Uh, and there is also an inherited condition called uh, per hereditary persistence of the hemoglobin F, uh, in uh, which patient, despite the fact that they can inherit at also the thalassemia gene or the sickle cell disease gene, uh, do not develop uh, the clinical signs uh, of uh, birth condition because of this uh, increase uh, hemoglobin F. And uh, we know very well that a molecule could, uh, by a gene located on chromosome 2, namely BCL11A, is responsible for the silencing and the synthesis of the gamma chain. So the line of reasoning at the basis of uh, the approach was that of uh, <clears throat> inactivating this gene through the CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing approach uh, with the specific uh, erythro-restricted uh, inactivation of uh, the production of uh, BCL11A. After two seminal cases published at the end of 2021 in the New England Journal of Medicine, further patients were recruited into two trials, namely the ClinTAL 111 or the Clean Sickle Cell Disease 121, which are a phase one, two, and three international multi center open label single arm pivotal study of this drug product, formerly known as CTX001 and now uh, called Exacel. The primary endpoint uh, for both studies reported in this cartoon, uh, and you can see that uh, the goal was that of estimating the proportion of patients uh, who become uh, transfusion independent if affected by thalassemia or free from a severe vasoclusive disease if affected by sickle cell disease. And uh, the age range uh, of patients recruited is between 12 and 35 years, and both studies were planned to recruit uh, up to 45 patients, and the enrollment uh, is already completed. Today, I'd like to present the data on uh, all patients uh, who were infused as of February 2022, namely 44 patients with uh, transfusion-dependent thalassemia and 31 affected by sickle cell disease. In terms of efficacy, 42 out of the 44 patients, namely 95%, reach transfusion independence. And the two patients who didn't reach a transfusion independence had a 75 and 89% reduction in the transfusion volume. And the results are sustained over time. And you see that, for example, in this first patient, the follow-up is even longer than three years. 
in the 31 patients affected by sickle cell disease, the success rate was 100% because all the patients were vasoclusis free after exocell infusion with a duration of the follow up from 2 to 32.3 uh, months. In terms of safety profile, it is consistent with that of a busulfan-based mild ablation followed by the infusion of autologous stem cells. In particular, no patient's diet or develop secondary malignancies or myelodysplastic syndrome. There were two patients who develop an SAE in particular, one patient with TDT had three severe adverse events related to exocell, many uh, occurring in the context of secondary HLH, hemophagocyte lymphocytosis, or uh, macrophage activating syndrome. And the second patient had a delayed recovery of both neutrophil and the platelets. So the CVD profile of the approach is certainly reassuring for the patient. So in conclusion, the data from uh, these 75 patients with uh, either transfusion-dependent thalassemia or sickle cell disease show that uh, a single dose of exocell leads to early increase in hemoglobin F and total hemoglobin that are sustained over time. 95% of patients with TDT stop a retrocyte transfusion, and all the patients with sickle cell disease are free from uh, basoclusive crisis. The safety profile is consistent with that uh, of an autologous transplant preceded by a myeloblation. And thus, we conclude that exocell has the potential to be the first crisscross line based therapy to provide a functional cure for patients with uh, thalassemia or sickle cell disease. Thank you again for the opportunity to present the data.